Queen Victoria's Bridesmaids. The wedding of Prince Albert and Queen Victoria is a moment in history that would be remembered forever. It took place at the Royal Peculiar of the Chapel Royal, St James's Palace. This was a place steeped in history and whereby the Queen's paternal grandparents, George III and Queen Charlotte, had married in 1761. It would be used for years to come to host the wedding of her eldest daughter too, when the Princess Royal also wed in 1858. In the only wedding ceremony of his children, which Prince Albert would live to attend. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Queen Victoria had 12 bridesmaids. There is a huge amount of curiosity surrounding these women and I will do a deep dive into their outfits of the day and what is known about them. It was common for royals to have large amounts of bridesmaids but Queen Victoria had more than most with 12. The famous painting depicted by Sir George Hayter shows the bridesmaids gathered in pairs courteously behind the Queen doing their duty as bridesmaids to ensure that her train was perfected. It has been reported that the bridesmaids faced quite the challenge as they were led up the aisle by the Queen of the Chapel Royal at St James's Palace. This was due to the train on the Queen's dress being very short which took a lot of care and attention to avoid kicking the ankles of each other and worse still tread on each other's dresses. This would have been a very nervous time for them as they were being watched by the public at large and would have caused a huge embarrassment had something gone wrong. Each of her bridesmaids were awarded an exquisite brooch in the shape of an eagle. These had been lovingly designed by the groom Prince Albert who had teamed up with the prestigious London jeweller Charles de Vie. The brooches created, as you can imagine, were of the highest quality, with the newspapers at the time writing that the whole workmanship of the brooches is very superior. The Queen wrote of the brooches, I gave all the train bearers a brooch, a small eagle of turquoise. The Queen was fashionably late for her own wedding and she kept her bridesmaids waiting for her in the dressing room for over 90 minutes. They must have become impatient, bored and fidgety while they waited but they would have been expected to have appeared unfazed by the inconvenience. They passed their time looking at the soldiers on guard beneath who looked a good deal rusted by the rain. When the Queen was finally ready, the bridal party made their way together with the Queen to the throne room at St James's Palace where the extravagant procession would begin. Queen Victoria had an oversight over the design of the bridesmaids, simple white dresses, and she even sketched them herself. She clearly had an eye for detail and an interest in design as proven by sketches that she did for the dolls that she made and painted as a child at Kensington. The Queen gave her sketch to the mistress of the robes, the Duchess of Sutherland, who accompanied her in the carriage to St James's Palace. The colour scheme of choice was a simple white wedding and this would be shunned today as it is not socially acceptable for bridesmaids to wear white alongside the bride, but Queen Victoria wanted them to wear simple gowns of white silk with white shoes. The bridesmaids wore trimmings of white roses at the tall overskirts, at their bodices and in their hair. The Queen's own wedding dress would be of a creamy white satin with a deep lace flounce and a wreath of orange flowers. The Queen again took an interest in sketching her own wedding day and she even sketched herself wearing her bridal headdress of orange blossoms. This bouquet of choice would continue for other royal weddings for years to come. The Queen's believed that her bridesmaid looked perfect 
and she is quoted to have said that they had a beautiful effect. However, their simple look was controversial and judged by the public at the time, as many believed that she had dressed her bridesmaids so plainly as a way to avoid them upstanding her on her big day. Some of the public believe they look like mere village girls, as opposed to royal bridesmaids, at the most extravagant wedding of the time. Little is known of the bridesmaids' personal identities, and this was kept under wraps, even in the Queen's own journals. Their names were not recorded by the Queen herself, and instead remain unnamed by the monarchy, with only a sketch to depict their presence. Prince Albert was a prudish man, perhaps as a result of his own parents' adulterous ways, and his desire to remove himself from such scandal in his own life. He wished for virginal women to represent the Queen on her big day, through their roles as her bridesmaids, with his desire to have daughters, aristocratic men, of impeccable character, represent their wedding day. Lord Melbourne told Prince Albert how unrealistic this request was, instead persuading him that their supreme marriage would suffice for the reputation of the monarchy for the future. Outside at St James's Palace, the twelve bridesmaids transferred the train to Prince Albert's care, before he climbed into the carriage that would travel to Buckingham Palace for the official signing of the marriage register and wedding breakfast. Luckily, Lord Escher had identified the bridesmaids present on the royal couple's big day. They were Lady Adelaide Paget, Lady Sarah Frederica Caroline Villiers, Lady Frances Elizabeth Cowper, Lady Elizabeth West, Lady Mary Augusta Frederica Grimston, Lady Eleonora Caroline Paget, Lady Caroline Amelia Gordon Lennox, Lady Elizabeth and Georgina Dorothea Howard, Lady Ida Hay, Lady Catherine Lucy Wilhelmina Stanhope, Lady Jane Harriet Bouvier, and Lady Mary Charlotte Howard. Queen Victoria recorded in her journal that Lady Sarah Villiers had been her bridesmaid in 1840. Lady Sarah became Princess Esther Hazy through marriage to Nicholas III, Prince Esther Hazy. Lady Sarah died in 1853 and again Queen Victoria noted it in her journal. Elizabeth, Duchess of Bedford, became the Queen's Mistress of the Robes in 1880. The Queen had also noted her presence as bridesmaid at her wedding. This was the former Lady Elizabeth Sackville West. Elizabeth was appointed Extra Lady of the Bedchamber in 1883. Whilst on holiday at Nice, staying in the fittingly named Hotel Regina, Queen Victoria sadly recorded the sudden death of Elizabeth in her journal. On the 23rd of April 1897, she again recalled that Elizabeth had once been one of her bridesmaids. Queen Victoria did not forget the important roles that her bridesmaids had on that famous day and some of them would continue to play a part in her future with other roles. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.